thank you for joining us on this exciting day three of National Activity Providers and Professionals Week. My name is Hilary Woodhead. I'm the Executive Director at the National Activity Providers Association. The week is flying by. Thank you for joining us once again. We're having a great time so far. Still lots happening, still lots to look forward to. It is our honour here at NAPA to host this wonderful celebration in recognition of the incredible contributions of activity providers and professionals across the UK. Today I'd like to express our heartfelt gratitude to our main sponsor, Belong Villages, and our celebration sponsor, Majestic Care Luxury Care Homes, for their unwavering support in making this week-long celebration possible. Thank you to everyone who has attended so far or caught up with the lives and have been along to our low cost webinars. Let us know what you think. There is still time to book onto the webinars. Head over to our Eventbrite page. Uh, we have spaces available today and tomorrow. So uh, please, please have a look and get yourself booked on. Uh, thanks also to those of you who've taken part in our step challenge, 10,000 steps a day for NAP week. Um, fantastic uh, uh, contributions. Lovely to see on social media people getting out and about. Again, still lots of time to get involved. You can do, you can still get your steps in over the next few days. Um, there's lots of information about that available in the chat. So today's theme um, is a theme very, very close to my heart, I have to say. This is the theme around creative programming. So what does it mean to, to plan activity provision and to make sure that provision is meaningful and person-centered? Uh, for me, creative programming, um, really it's about programming that matters. It's about programming that matters to the individual. And I think when it comes to being creative as activity providers, there's an expectation that we have, we'll never run out of ideas. You know, there'll always be something that we can think up on the spot if necessary. And I think sometimes that's quite a, that's, that's quite a tall order. So we're going to hear today about some of the tips, some of the things that can help us remain creative and keep our kind of, you know, our juices flowing um, um, to make sure that that programming remains as creative as possible. Creativity in programming enables a sense of exploration. It invites individuals that we support to discover new interests and it can even inspire new talents. But most of all, it's about promoting inclusivity and a sense of belonging. Ultimately, creative programming enables um, people to try new things, um, share their talents and experiences with others. And I think for activity providers, it keeps their job fresh and interesting. One of the things that we've done um, around this topic of creative programming is to develop a toolkit um, for activity providers uh, around this theme. We get a lot of questions through the Activity Support Service about programming, about activity planners, about programmes and calendars. And there is a little bit of debate about whether or not we should have an activity programme on the wall or whether it should be something that is decided on the day. And there's different schools of thought about that. But I think this, this toolkit really will help activity providers work out what works for them and for the individuals they support. And I think quite often it's a bit of both. It's having something that guides the, the day, the week, the month or the year in terms of ideas, but it also gives some flexibility to make sure that there are spontaneous opportunities to become engaged as well. So one of the things that I thought would be helpful today is to actually speak to a couple of activity providers, people with lots of experience, more recent experience than I, who can share with us their, their, their strategies, the things that they do to keep their programmes creative. So I'd like to welcome my guests, Natalie Ravenscroft and Lizzie Grant. Um, Natalie is our service development manager here at NAPA. She, has a, she is an activity professional. Uh, with lots of experience working in the sector and her colleague Lizzie Grant who is an activity provider for Cinnamon Care and she's going to tell us a little bit about her work and what she's been doing around this particular theme. So hello both, welcome. Hi, hi, nice to hi, meet you. Hi, good morning, good morning. That's a fantastic t-shirt Lizzie I have to say. Thank you. Activity <laughs> Thank you. squad, brilliant, brilliant. So 
Natalie, can you just start us off? Just tell us a little bit about how we know Lizzie. Yeah, well, we've had the pleasure of working with Lizzie for, for quite a while now here at Napa. Um, and Lizzie first came uh, to Napa as a member um, and joined what we call the APA group. So the Activity Providers Advisory Group. And this is a, a membership benefit. So the Activity Providers yeah, sorry, I'll say that again. The APA group consists of working activity providers who attend um, on, a, on a Zoom session six times a year to learn about uh, and provide feedback on products, projects, partnerships, resources, anything relating to activity and engagement. And it's really fundamental to the work we do here at NAPA. Many of the APA members have already participated in national campaigns, received uh, free products, subscriptions, um, and heavily involved in, in something that's really important at the moment, which is research. Um, and yeah, they're just it's just an amazing group. It's fun, it's relaxed, um, and it's a great place to skill share as well. Um, you know, some relationships have really come out of, of the APA group, which is such a joy for us to see here at Napa. Brilliant. Thank you for that overview. So let's get cracking. I've got I've got some questions that I want to ask you both, if that's OK. And I hope that we'll get some questions from our audience, too. So if you're sat watching us on Facebook or YouTube, please send us your comments, your questions in the chat, and we'll do what we can to get to those over the next uh, 20 minutes or so. So the first one is um, a little bit about how you develop your activity plans kind of where do you start what's your experience of that and kind of what inspires you really so lizzie do you want to start us off with that one so just thinking about how i develop a, an, a, an activity program it's very much um there is there's a kind of a mix really in um very much about what the residents are interested in what they want to have a go at but also maybe putting in something that they don't know about. And um, and that's really interesting as well, because that means have a go, see what happens. I love that. That's one of my my mantras all the time is have a go, see what happens. So um, it's finding out what my residents are interested in, love that, and then developing the program from there. Getting feedback all the time from our residents to see if they're enjoying it. But also, let's see, did you like that? Do you want to have another go? Um, we've just started doing what we call a la carte arts and crafts. And that might be a mix of arts and crafts in the room and just join in, have a go or bring your own. And if you're interested in knitting or something like that, bring that into the room. So sometimes there's that nice mix. It's not a structured art session. It's that a la carte, just have a go. Um, and that's um, about socialising and that. Um, but then we also have um, a tutor coming in who will talk about doing watercolours or acrylics. And that's a more structured lesson. And some residents really like that. They want to learn. Um, yeah. You know, they've got time. It's something they've always wanted to do. Um, and so I love that um, because they're learning a, a particular process and they want to achieve a picture at the end of it. So that's there as well um, so that's really sounds like quite a diverse program is what you're saying it needs to be it needs to have it has lots of elements to it yes yes and then one thing i've started recently and this um has surprised me but absolutely loved was alison from arts and care homes interviewed a colleague about doing art appreciation and uh, the colleague did this whole thing about a particular picture and they discussed it and the key questions would do you like it would you buy it would you have it in your room and i thought you know i'm going to try that and um we absolutely love it we absolutely love it and the conversations that comes out of this we just choose a couple of pictures we look at them we talk about them and uh, we ended up talking it was about north american art and a resident of mine said, oh, we've got a totem pole in our garden in Yorkshire. I went, oh, really? She said, yeah. And it was like some relation from ages ago had married an Indian princess, brought her over like the Pocahontas story, but not. Fabulous. Never expected that. So, and the art appreciation you think is going to be really, so, oh, that's a bit serious. Fabulous. Uh, try it, have a go. So we've got the Alicard art, we've got our... Um, and it's all creativity. It isn't about art. And of course, we have our singers. We have different singers coming in. We have a choir master coming in. 
and he asks what we like folk songs so he'll talk about the history of that and then we have um, a more sort of soul singer coming in and a duo so we mix up our our, our creativity a lot as much as possible Brilliant. all the Brilliant. time <laughs> <laughs> that sounds really good. And I think it's what's so lovely about the word creativity, isn't it? Because, you know, as as practitioners, you know, we're thinking all the time about new and different ways of doing things. And that's a creative process in itself. But then as part of our activity program, we're thinking about how do we ensure people have time and space to be creative? So, yeah. you know, creativity, it brings it's it's sort of it's such an important theme in terms yeah. of our approach, but also in terms of the content of the activity yeah. provision. Anything to add to that, Natalie? Yeah, I think also, you know, thinking about um, who is in the in that in the community. So, and I'm talking our inner community in the first instance. So, looking at individuals' life stories, making sure they're up to date, you know, and and you can add that into your activity programs, and also your staff teams. Plenty of your staff yeah. teams will have rich resources. You know, how can you pair them up to individuals? How can you draw down on their experience and their hobbies and interests? Um, and yeah. provide them with the confidence to be able to support your activity programs. So I think yeah. that in the it's all about the planning as we you know as we continuously say yes we want the evaluation at the end but we need to plan at the beginning. So thinking about drawing down on that information, pulling it together, and then using that as a base to start your activity planning um, and be creative. Yeah, I think um, a key thing for me is. Uh, communication I'm well I'm a chatterbox I'm I'm talking all the time but I'm more really interested um, and just to give you an insight we did uh, with cinnamon care home um, the strictly dancing we had to do it upload a dance a day and one of our staff team here said I'm a member of a Tudor dance reenactment group would you like them to come in wow <laughs> but Brilliant. I had time that was a conversation I could have with her we chatted about it and they came in. Honestly, it was fantastic. Absolutely fabulous. But is that, isn't it? Is that communication, having that time? Um, and especially with team members, because I think sometimes they might think, well, shall I, do you think she's interested? So I always think, be interested. The team members will surprise you with what links they have in the community, like Natalie was saying. And I love that. I yeah. absolutely love that. I think I think it's 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 more important probably than we give service to. I think we should emphasize much more through this through our year of belonging this year how important that really is that our that that every team member brings into their work the things that matter to them Absolutely. in their in their personal lives the, the ways that their own talents but also what they enjoy doing locally. I think I think what helps them feel a sense of belonging um, outside of work probably informs their practice more than they realize inside of work and yeah. certainly can can add to the activity provision and activity program planning um any other kind of innovative programs that either of you have been involved in that you'd like to share with our our viewers today i did and i still do so um don't use paintbrushes don't use paintbrushes so use something to make um your your picture up um and because that takes away that i was never good at art at school because it's oh, i've got a paintbrush and it's a, so i made up these um pictures of hydrangeas and it's just using bubble wrap it's a limited um color so you're just going to use white purple pink and maybe blue and uh, the bubble wrap just in the shape of a ball dipped in the paint dabbed onto paper you immediately get the hydrangea shapes and then use a sponge to make some green leaves. So no paintbrushes are involved. You've got a really lovely picture. Um, the other thing is using stamps, mark making with stamps. Again, using like I did it with tropical colours. And just by selecting the colours really helps the finished product because they can choose their colours. But if you're saying, here's your tropical colours, and um and then one lady said oh could you put some tendrils on for me and she loved it i drew the tendrils because she knew she was you know she just couldn't get what she wanted that's a nice thing to do is to do that and she said and she ended up with these pea pods and tendrils all from just mark making no paint brushes and um it just daubs of paint um and they loved it when they when you pull back that shape and you're looking what picture it's made 
it's lovely. It's absolutely gorgeous. So that's yeah, such a lovely you, example. Thank yeah. you. That's a lovely don't, example. Don't use brushes. If you can, if you're doing some fun art, uh, use something else. Definitely. I think what I really liked about what you what you said as well, which is that the individual said, can we do it together? So you were led rather than because I think yeah. it's really sometimes when you when you embark on an activity that perhaps is a, a little bit different to something you ordinarily would do the your your own I use anxiety the word anxiety lightly but your own uncertainty maybe as a practitioner that you might have to step in can take over but actually yeah. what you did there even though it was a new and you know you're trying something new and different yeah. is be led by the person and that's really yeah. lovely to hear because we do things together don't we you know whatever we do in our spare time and our yeah. you know we do it together yeah. with others and that's that's usual but i think sometimes in activity provision we worry too much about the together we want to set it up so that people can do it entirely independently but sometimes yeah. in order to be independent the the doing it together builds yeah. confidence it's but being led by the person and i thought that came across really well in in that example thank you Again, anything to add to that, Natalie, in terms of, um, you know, something that you've done in your own practice that was a bit unique or different that that worked, that you wouldn't, might yeah. not have been expecting it to work or you were unsure, but it did? I think one of the things that jumps out in my mind is a, is an article that was in a Napa magazine many years ago. And, it, it you know, for, again, being part of the Napa membership has really helped me within my practice over the years of sharing ideas and skills. And it was um, yeah. a mobile tro it was a mobile trolley. And I particularly remember the article where this activity provider had created, if you're watching, hello, because you've made a real difference to my practice, where, where they had made this um, garden sensory trolley that went round to individuals that are cared for in their rooms. It was um, very mobile. It has things like herbs on it, pictures, sounds. You know, it was really inclusive. It had um, opportunities um, uh, the little greenhouses that we get and you know put little mini onions in and the little tools to have a go at, at sowing seeds and and I just remember reading an article in Napa magazine back then and thinking to myself wow how amazing is this and yeah. that led on to other areas for inspiration and creativity around what are we providing <laughs> people's um, in individuals rooms so that as staff members or family members come and visit that they can conversate with them individuals. They might not want to come into a group session um, and we might not be able to facilitate everything as activity providers and be everywhere at once, but enabling our staff, enabling meaningful visits to be able to happen by providing the tools. So yeah, shout out to that activity provider that made all the difference to me <laughs> many, many years ago. Yeah, and I think that's what's so lovely. And we touched on this, I think, didn't we yesterday, but that actually activity providers inspire activity providers and the more we talk about what we do and what worked and what didn't work the more ideas we generate as a result so you know and that's what we're all about here as at Napa as, as the professional body and the association we want to enable that to happen we might not have all the answers but we can collate them and share them and and get yeah. them out there into the world so I think conversations such as these they they are inspiring, aren't they? I'm thinking now, my goodness, yeah. what, you know, there needs to be more inside, doesn't there, from the outside. In all our, in all our environments, actually, yeah. I know I feel better when I've got a bunch of flowers in my living room. I just feel better. It just, yeah. I, you know, every day. And when they start to turn, I think I cut the bottoms off and I cut the bottoms off and I put them back in the water and <laughs> I make them last a little bit longer and a little bit longer. But as soon as they've gone, I have to go out and, and cut some more, either from my <laughs> own garden or go down to the to the local yeah. shop and buy some. But I think, you know, the, you're absolutely right that, you know, it's those it's a reminder for me. I haven't got any flowers at the minute. It's reminded me I need to go and get some. And I think yeah. I think that outside in, we you know, again, new ways of doing it, thinking differently just a different idea, a different spin on it can make yeah. all the difference, can't it? So thank you yeah. both for that. Um, so it's, let's have a little think about approach and how we adapt our approach, because obviously we can have all the ideas in the world and we've got thousands in the activity shed, but actually we often get asked, and this comes up a lot, doesn't it, Natalie, in the RAIN group, in the, in the network every month, you know, how can we adapt these activities as people's needs change, but also thinking about the diversity of individuals that we come into contact with as activity providers? 
Any examples there? Natalie, do you want to start us off on that one about adaptation? Yeah, of course. And again, another session springs to mind. I mean, I, I remember um, with Unilever, we did a seaside theme a few years back. Um, and I've done quite a lot of art sessions. But it's about how we set, how we set that up to support different individuals at different stages at different journeys and also individuals that come um to live in the uk from from different countries and how we can share you know their passion their knowledge um so we would set up i would set up activities in such a way that um i would have something visual whether that be on a projector or on a tablet somewhere um, in some cases, we've had a budgie on the table when we've been doing the uh, bird count for in January. You know, um, that was amazing. We we had some pre-done images or we've had um, textured things that people can feel, whether that's sand. Um, and then we've also brought into the mix, um, say, if we were doing a bird session for the Great Garden uh, Bird Watch, we would have different birds from around the world. You know, so we'd have tropical exotic birds, not just birds that are based in the UK so that people might have been on holiday or, you know, they might might have lived in another country and, and, and it will remember, remind them and it will start a conversation. So all different levels um, for abilities, support needs, um, sensory engagement and also cultural um, really does help um, form and create meaningful sessions for people. Yeah. And I think what's really interesting about has people's abilities change too. I mean, sometimes we get questions, don't we, through the support service about, well, I work with people with, with dementia. So therefore yeah. advanced dementia or people who are cared for in bed, yeah. um, people with really complex communication problems. So these activities, you know, they they won't work. Um and and actually what we're saying it what we what we're saying at NAPA is the activity idea is there to inspire you for some people you'll be able to take it, and you it but actually you're bringing what makes you the ap is you're bringing that that understanding and approach of how to adapt that to meet somebody's individual needs because you know they like i don't know you know they like sewing or material how are you going to make that relevant you know they like sports so you've got some sports equipment how are you going to make that relevant anything yeah. to add on that lizzie about adapting to, to i, um, to I really love collage work because um i did uh, for example uh, butterflies it can be birds um flowers i've done that as well um and just a canvas and just a, a a spongy background so no no art required um cut out butterfly or flower pictures they can be colored in for people who aren't interested in drawing you can cut out pictures of um flowers or that on different colored paper they can choose the color they like the shape they like say yeah i want that and i want it to go there on the picture and that's enough. And they joined in. Fantastic for somebody whose mobility is really, really limited, but they're still choosing colours and they're thinking about where it's going and they're part of that college collage. And I also really love doing, do you remember at school or I don't know, the themed nature tables? I love that. And you bring in something from outside, you know, and I love this. And we did one recently with um, pumpkins. And we brought in leaves and there were some conkers. And then we made origami um, leaves out of very, it was really tough card, but it was gorgeous. And uh, residents would come along and go, yeah, I, I'll just move that leaf. And um, can I put these flowers in? And this sort of sculpture just grew fabulous, but it was linked into that theme. But it was a collage. And, and entirely yeah. age appropriate. And that's what's really and key completely. there, isn't it? Yeah. Because we've have, we have such exactly debates easy. certain times of the year about yeah. themes being age appropriate. And I think Halloween is one of those times when we have a real yeah. we have a real debate here at Napa about, about what's appropriate in terms of, yeah. you know, we don't want, is this a children's festival? Is it an intergenerational opportunity? You know, yeah. how do we, but what you've just described about autumnal nature and the pumpkins, yeah. etc. Yeah. That is also that's linked to Halloween, but it's yeah. but it's age appropriate, it's sensory, yeah. it's inclusive. And I yeah. think you know it's about how do you interpret and adapt the idea to suit the people you're working with. So brilliant, brilliant <coughs> examples there, both yeah. of you. Thank you. Yeah. Um creativity in approach is often about overcoming challenges 
Um, do you have any examples from where you've had to think on your feet or implement an activity and it's you've had to navigate it, you've had to do something different as a result? Any ideas of where things just haven't gone to plan, but actually something else happened that was just as worthwhile? I am... Um... One of my favorite books is called Dancing by the Light of the Moon. And it's uh, written by Charles Brandreth with people with dementia in mind. Always keep that in your back pocket because people love being read out loud to. They'll know the poems or you can start a poem off and they'll go, I love that. So reading out aloud, if you're really stuck, is, is a wonderful get out card. Uh, but also my <laughs> other card, my other card, um, arts and crafts because there's something hopefully for everyone and also I think sometimes um I'm led by them that actually some residents just want to sit there and be a part of the group but not doing it so uh, you've got to be aware of that and allow yeah. that to be because that is sometimes really special because they're being a part of the group but they're not making something yeah. they're just enjoying that social side of it yeah. so yeah always have something the get out card i like the idea of some, you know poetry or a book in your back pocket is a lovely is a lovely uh, idea yeah. and a, a good friend of ours here at napa sally knocker always used to talk about the activity apron like having a pinny with yeah. bits and bobs in it that you could just pull something out whether it's a picture yeah. of your cat or you know yeah. uh, uh, yourself on the beach on holiday or just something yeah. that you can start a conversation with or, yeah. or change track if you need to yeah, yeah. anything yeah. from you on that natalie yeah, two things that I, I've used that have been really successful in, in my all my years of practice. So the first one is definitely Sally Knocker's apron. Um, I used to have a market belt, uh, yeah. just a general money, met, money belt. And um, some, some of my uh, ex-colleagues watching this will probably know what I'm talking about. And I would have chattering teeth in there, pack of cards, some nice um, scarves and jewellery, um, things that I could just start a conversation with. Um, you know, if someone was a little bit um, worried about something or anxious, I could just put the yeah. chattering teeth on the table and they'd be like, oh, and they'd start, you know, it sends a bit of humour. Um, so I really, really like that idea of having something in your pocket. Um, and then the second thing is creative writing. The amount of times that I've, I, I have been able to use an image from a newspaper, a magazine, a book, whether I'm out in the community with someone, whether I'm at an appointment supporting, whether um, you know, we're just generally having a chat about today's news and being able to create a story from that image um, and, and the individual really running with, with their thoughts. Um, and, and, you know, there's been some funny conversations that have come out of them. But then being able to put that into a story and then providing a title um yeah absolutely lovely lovely thank you both i think we've got some time for questions um now if there's some questions in the chat i think i can see one coming up from myra brilliant myra says how do you get time to plan i think this is a big issue for a busy activity provider isn't it any thoughts on that who'd like which one of you would like to take that one I'm happy um, to take it if you want, unless yeah, Lizzie wants you, to. Take it. Yeah, you take it, Natalie, because I, yeah. I think, I think it all comes down to, as Lizzie said before, around communication. So talk to your line managers. We have a great toolkit in the shed um, about co-creating um, an environment um, of culture of engagement. And that really helps you to discuss with your manager the importance of you having um, time to plan. We have a, a NAPA power hour, you know, on a Monday morning before you start. If you're a NAPA member, log on to the shed, see what's there to help you throughout the weeks that are coming ahead and the months to help you plan. Um, and contact us here at the support line service if you need um, any advice or inspiration. But it really is about working with your line manager, your home manager around the time that you need to plan because it is an important part of your role. Yeah. It absolutely yeah. is. And I think I think the more experienced we get, sometimes we think, well, actually, I need less planning time. But the reality is that the more experience we get, the more we realise how important the planning time is and that you yeah. need time to think and to prepare and to make sure that your activities are adapted as we've talked about to individual yeah. needs because it's not good not every idea doesn't suit every person so yeah absolutely Lizzie did you want to add something yeah I absolutely agree um 
I'm really lucky because I get to spend time um, with my line manager, with the sales and marketing manager, with the chef, um, and um, with the team members. Um, so, but that's through the day, you know. Um, so um, it can be a five minute conversation. It can be a, a structured meeting. So I think again, yeah. it comes back to communication. But planning is key, absolutely, and and finding the time. Yeah, it's difficult, but I I prioritise that time yeah. to plan. Sure. Brilliant. But thank you. Lucky, thank you both. Yeah. Thank you. Um, I think so. The, is there another question coming in? I'm just wanting this one. Oh, brilliant. This one's from Ella. I feel bad because I can't get around all my residents every day. Any advice? This is a yeah. tough one. If you're a single, if you're the only AP yeah. in the building, Ella, that is that is hard. Um, you know. Yeah, I mean, I think I think this is a question we get asked quite a bit, Natalie, on the support service. Do you want yeah. to take one? Yeah. yeah, we definitely do get this on the support service. Um, I w what I would say, Ella, is, um, again, communicate with your line manager, but remember that you can't be everywhere and do everything at once. That's impossible. So it's about us, as I said earlier, providing them resources for, you know, as family members are coming to visit, the, the Napa calendar is a great example. We've got lots of quizzes um, within, the, within the shed um, available for you to download. Put them in Polly Pockets, creative writing, you know, acrostic poems with paper, with pens, have them say, enjoy your visit today. You know, they just because you're not delivering the engagement and Hillary's going to smile because, and Lizzie will hear me say this all the time, an activity provider is like a conductor of a band. Okay. You need people to help you play the music. You can, you can um, lead on what that music will sound like, but you've got to provide the instruments for them to be able to deliver. So it's exactly the same. It's okay if you're not I think the same thing I'm trying to get across is it's OK if you're not personally doing the activities as long as yeah. you're providing the opportunities for engagement. Yeah. 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 That's a really yeah. I think that's a really good point. Anything anything to add to that, Lizzie? Well, we just started doing um, little newsletters, weekly ones, weekend ones. Again, it takes time. And I found the residents families have loved reading what's going on reading it out aloud oh you know not just the program um and i thought on the back oh, let me do some writing yeah we're gonna we're gonna talk about what we're doing what you know we've got the school coming in next week what's their why are they coming in what are they wanting so i've written about that and yeah. that's been great so the family member or a friend has sat there and got oh this is really oh this is on this week or you know or you're doing this so just those little newsletters or a little bit of information then that can go in the residence room. Um, it's great. It really works. Yeah. yeah, that's a really nice idea. And then there's always, a, again, something to pick up and talk about a yeah. prompt, isn't it? Which is lovely. Um, oh, we've got a lovely comment here from Francis. I have a wicker black basket with me with bits and bobs in my residence, uh, for my residents. Um, always know it's they yeah. they always know it's me coming when they see the basket <laughs> i love oh, that that's lovely. really nice <laughs> yeah and that's that's a really nice example I, isn't it of actually having stuff about the place that people can pick up and look at whether that's a yeah. doll whether that's a piece of as you say um yeah. you know the materials to do some creative writing whatever it might be and kathleen says and i have a pinny too so good yeah, well, yeah, <laughs> no, i think the, 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 the pin is I think the creative communication is really key. What Lizzie's just said, if you're going to take anything away from today is the creative approaches to communication. Yeah. And one of them prime examples is like a buddy board. You know, you give it whatever jazzy name you want to call it. But a buddy board really does help within the service to highlight where you need items for craft sessions. If you're going on trips and excursions, do you need volunteers? If you're running a fete, um, or, you know, or a, a bingo night or, you know, some a quiz night. Do you need volunteers to help you come to that? Have an area where staff can put down what their hobbies are so that you can find out if um, Karen likes to play the ukulele who works in the kitchens um, on the catering teams. So, you yeah. know, having having that information on a board that people can access and write if they want to attend or they can support yeah. is, is really key to that communication, you know, right there as they come in. Yeah. yeah. No, I think, I think, I think all those points are really important, but, I think if you're working in a big care service, in a big care home, for example, you're not going to see all your residents every day, no. but you'll see them every other day. 
or every few days. And I think, again, it's about who needs what, because if people have lots of visitors, if they love group activities, then they're probably getting more engagement than people who are on their own in their room or cared for in bed. So that's where that person centred, more bespoke approach comes in. And also thinking about 24 hours of the day. So the night staff, what are the night staff up to? <laughs> are they able to spend a bit more time with Betty, for example, who's you know likes to stay up late but sleeps late in the mornings and misses the coffee morning? You know, who it's it's not all about as as Natalie said, all about your time. It's about the planning of activity and engagement over the whole 24 hours. Um, the next the next question, if there is another one, that would be good. Um, this one is hi Jack. There seems to be a lot of differentiation in the role, the role of the AP, and what's expected. Why do why do our our experts think that is? That's a very good question. I mean, we talk about activity providers, and we use that terminology. Um, it's important to to recognise them as a profession, but we recognise that within that there are lots of different roles, different job titles, um, and different levels of experience and authority as well in terms of making things happen um, within, within the roles too. So, I mean, the first thing I would say is, what are the expectations of your manager in that scenario? Being really clear about the role description because, yeah. you know, we're talking here about all sorts of wonderful ways in which you can approach programming but you, you need to, if you're only working two days a week and your role is as an assistant activity um, uh, uh, provider or activity coordinator, then obviously you're not going to be able to, to work at the same speed or deliver the same level of activity provision as somebody who has, um, you know, three activity providers um, in the same size setting and they're covering 24-7. So I think, you know, be, be, care be realistic about what you can do and be clear with your yeah. manager about the expectations. Anything yeah. to add to that in, in terms of your experience, Natalie? Obviously, you've had lots of roles and lots of job titles over your career, all of which have been about activity provision. But anything to add from your experience? Yeah, I think it's a two way street. Um, you know, one of the best interviews I probably ever went into was they asked me what I can give to them, but I asked them what they can also give to me. And I think it's having the confidence to ask that and and learn and, and ask where you need extra skill set training. So whether that's maybe, you know, you've been asked by your home manager to go out into the community, go and connect with the community, go yeah. and go, you know, go, go and contact this school. Well, if you haven't got this, the, the experience around that, if you're not confident in writing emails, if you don't understand the organisation's policies around, you know, approaching services or um following up when you have been gifted something if you're not familiar with that then in your supervisions or go and meet with your manager at your monthly meetings and say look I would really like some training around sending emails I would really like some training around how to connect with the community I would like some intergenerational training don't be afraid yeah. to ask yeah. for that support absolutely mm. yeah really really good point thank you Lizzie anything to add mm. Because obviously you've had a couple of different activity provider roles as well, haven't you? Yeah, I, I, I'm just really lucky because I've got uh, uh, my general manager's open door policy and the HAA I see every day. So if there's a constant talking, but I do agree it is about boundaries. I think it's really difficult if you come from care into activity because you can slip back into care sometimes or you're called upon. I didn't come from a care background at all. So I came just into to activities. So um, that helps with boundaries a lot, I think, because yeah. I'm just focused on activities. Um, yeah. And I think sometimes that's where there is uh, can be quite a tricky time. Yeah. Um, yeah. But yeah, yeah, it's definitely about boundaries. Mm. Yeah. And I think if you feel like your role is developing and you're, you know, and that's something that you are, you know, you value and you're interested in, then look at the professional development pathway. There are yeah, so yeah. many, as Natalie said, you know, there are so many opportunities to develop your role and to yeah. talk to your employer and your manager about the development of your role. You know, if you've yeah. come in, you know, there's the first activity provider in that setting. There's never been one before. Everybody will be learning 
about what this what this role is within this setting and what's needed within this setting and that's a great opportunity actually to kind of really to, to almost mold your own role which is which is fantastic yeah. but of course you need to make sure that you don't burn yourself out that you look after yourself yeah. and that you do that in line with the expectations of, of, of your manager but have a look at the professional development pathway because there's as we've said there and the and the professional development program at Napa because there is training along all of that you know every step of the way and I use the term training you know very loosely there are various ways to help you learn as your role develops and changes um but a really yeah. great question Jack thank you for that yeah. I think I think in terms of time, we're a little bit over actually, but that's been a fantastic discussion. Thank you both. I feel like we could have gone on forever. I feel like we could have. I think there's a lot more to chew over there, isn't there? But um, yeah, yeah, it's been it's been great. Thank you both. Thank you. Thank you so um, much. Just just a couple of <laughs> just a couple of reminders really for everybody. Um, please come back tomorrow. We've got a fantastic session tomorrow where Natalie will be talking to Zoe Robson. Zoe is a wellbeing specialist and a physical activity expert yeah. and a nutritionist. She's going to be talking about self care for activity providers, but also self care for your for the individuals you support and how you can weave that into your activity programs, which is really exciting. Um, we have, um, of course, discounts this week for membership, um, for our qualifications, um, special discounts. This, it's like the January sales here at Napa. <laughs> we've got special discounts for qualifications and for membership. And we've also got a massive sale on in our shop. So for those of you who aren't members and want to get your hands on some of these toolkits, um, please have a look at the shop as well. Um, and our conferences are now live for our early birds. So if you want to book onto your conference, we're in Birmingham and Edinburgh in July and September, that you can head over uh, onto Eventbrite or into the Activity Shed uh, if you're a NAPA member and book your spots at the conferences now. But for now, thank you both very, very much. Have a great rest of day. Enjoy the rest of NAP week. Take care. Bye for now. Week, everyone. Have a great Bye. week. Bye. Bye.